Zachary here? His mom said he was coming right over. Oh, you're not gonna believe this. He just left, and Tatiana went to get him. This is so confusing. <sighs> well, where did they go? Did he say he was coming back? Well, he said to go ahead and, and read the book. Yeah, that's what he said, huh? He did? Uh, did he really? Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> well, let's say we read another book. What do you say we read a story about places you can go to in your imagination? Okay. Okay. This is The Magic House, a story by Robin Harbert Eversoll. This is her first book. And illustrations by Peter Palagonia, his first book as well. The house at 519 Kipperney Street belonged to April. Her mother and her father and her older sister Meredith lived there too. But the house was April's, and the house was magic. In the middle of the house was a waterfall. It ran from the second floor to the first. April could slide down it and never get wet. On the first floor was a desert. The ground was yellow, and everywhere there were big cactuses. April could climb on the cactuses, and they would never prickle her. Down in the basement was a cave. Two monsters lived there, way back in the corner. They muttered and growled when April's mother fed them baskets of clothes. The monsters weren't very scary, but they were monsters nonetheless. And April was proud to have them in her magic house. The only trouble with the house at 519 Kipperney Street was April's older sister, Meredith. Meredith didn't believe the house was magic, so when she walked by, the waterfall stopped being a waterfall. Don't slide down the stairs, Meredith would say. When April was in the desert and Meredith came along, the desert became a living room. Stop climbing on the furniture, Meredith would say, as she sat down to practice the piano, loudly. When you're older, you'll do lots of things, Meredith told April one day. You'll learn piano and ballet, like me. Meredith held on to the kitchen counter and lifted one leg in the air. Well, April lifted one leg in the air without holding on to the counter. I do lots of things already, she said. I'm going to be a swan in the recital, said Meredith. Will you get to dance in water, asked April. Not real water, no, Meredith said. She was having trouble with one of her steps and frowned at April. We're supposed to pretend. Well, Meredith did leap in the middle of the kitchen, and the pots and pans in the cupboard shook. Swans don't thump, she said, and frowned again. April knew something that Meredith didn't. April knew that for weeks and weeks, water had been tumbling down the waterfall and making a beautiful blue lake at the bottom. I don't feel like a swan, Meredith said. I don't look like a swan. I'm a dancer thumping in the middle of the kitchen. The pots and pans shook again. Come with me, April said. April took Meredith to the front hall, right to the edge of the beautiful blue lake. This is a lake, she told Meredith. A beautiful blue lake with reeds all around and swans in the middle. Oh, April, Meredith said. Don't act. This is the front hall. April sat down on the stairs, which were just stairs and not a waterfall. Practice here anyway, she said. Well, Meredith did a few more leaps, thumping a little less with each one, sailing and soaring more and more like a swan. running past her hands. 
It lapped across the floor, reflecting Meredith. Reeds sprouted along the walls. And when Meredith lifted her arms at her sides, April saw wings. Do you see the lake, April asked? Do you see it? Meredith didn't say anything. She was gliding over the water. And the next moment, she wasn't Meredith at all. beautiful blue lake in the middle of April's magic house. Sherry. 